नमो दस भगवत अर्हत समुद्ध गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स रेडी टू स्टार्ट अवर इवनिंग सेशन टुडे अवर टॉपिक इज पराभव सुप्त डाउन पोल there was a group of deities who came to see the buddha then same same story like uh, the previous sutta that we discussed yesterday um, the group of deities who came to see the buddha and they asked these questions from the buddha oh gautama about man's decline please tell us the cause of downfall please tell us the cause of downfall so taking that opportunity the buddha started to explain the way how we loosen our human qualities as well as our developments when we start to talk about uh, success uh, there are two kind of success that the mention there is a particular sutta named dvichakku sutta dvichakku sutta it does mention as a lay person there should be two kind of, two kind of success in their life one is spiritual development spiritual development without the spiritual development how much wealth that you have probably become useless so therefore buddha always mention spiritual growth as well as wealth you have to establish grow together so in here in this particular sutta parabhava sutta it mention the way how we lose in all these success well as well as spirituality well and spirituality both are losing together if you are applying any of these factors there are two stanzas in this particular sutta explain the avenues that we can see driving into wrong directions and losing our success as we know we have a goal in our life to be success according to that uh, uh, explanations of uh, abraham maslow self satisfaction is the final goal according to my explanation self satisfaction means attaining enlightenment until that no one can satisfy in their life because they still they are living with defilements if you are living with defilements there is no way to satisfy there would, would be some unhappiness in here in this particular sutta parabhava sutta or downfall sutta discourse of downfall the way how it's losing from you your success your satisfactoriness your happiness your rapture going away from you if you are living with these factors if any of these factors are with you in your day to day life so then it might be cause for your happiness to destroy your happiness to reduce your happiness to eliminate your happiness what are those we'll see perhaps you might uh, already experience these things you can see through this sutta what are those things and as well as you can do some research about this whether this is true or not because all these explanations coming through the sutta now you can apply it 
you can uh, uh, you can see the results whether it is true or not. Easily known is the progressive one. Easily known he who declines. He who loves dhamma progress. He who is always to it. In here, who like dhamma? This is very uh, interesting uh, things about the dhamma. Who likes dhamma? They are on the path for their spiritual development as well as their uh, uh, economy developments. Who hate Dhamma, they are definitely not, not in their spiritual development. Hating Dhamma means who is going against the natural law. Hating Dhamma means going against the natural law. Going against natural law means you don't care about the culture, no law and order, no norms, no values, no taboos, nothing. You don't care about any of these things. Now you can see yourself through your experience. If someone don't care, norms, values, taboos, how to be the nature of that person's behavior? He is always living with sensual pleasure, ill will, restlessness, sloth at open, doubt. All these hindrances are there with that person. If you not take care, norms, values, taboos, law and orders, any of these things, all these are created by human beings. Law and order created by you. Norms, values also, all are concept created by all these concepts created by human beings. But these concepts are very important in this mundane world to maintain, to develop our happiness. The Buddha introduced precepts related to this norms, values, taboos, law and orders, and for everything. And then Buddha explained why I introduced these precepts to my order, my followers. Sangha Suttutai, Sangha Pasutai. These are the reasons. Sangha Suttutai, happiness of community, the followers. The Buddha introduced precepts, happiness of community. Sangha Suttutai, Sangha Pasutai, comfort of the community. The Buddha introduced precepts, uh, comfort of the community as well as their happiness. This is the reason. Therefore, Dhamma, who, who like Dhamma means they like all these precepts, uh, norms, values, tabus, because very important things, same and fear. Same and fear is very important in our life. Particularly fear not to involve with any kind of harm, harmful things, not to do any harmful things. If you have fear not to do any harmful things to anyone, that is kind of positive things that we have, that we develop through our spiritual development. There are people who don't have fear, who are not in, on same, they can do whatever they wanted to do. They don't have culture. They don't care about the culture. That kind of living with that kind of people, how we can gain peace? They destroy our peace as well as their peace. Therefore, we need Dhamma Chandra. We, the people who are living with us, if they are respecting the Dhamma, Dhamma means in here natural law, they are respecting, if they are respecting their culture, norms, values, taboos, all these things, which means they are respecting Dhamma, they are increasing their happiness, their self, as well as they are helping others to increase their happiness. Reducing five hindrances, five hindrances. 
this is very important so if someone not doing this they are destroying their self they are losing their happiness they are losing their wealth and mental health too wealth and health both are losing from them the wicked are dear to him with the virtues he finds no delight he prefer the greed of the wicked this is a cause of one's downfall there's another thing unwholesome uh, unlawful unhappy crazy full of uh, 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 hindrances working with that person in his mind so he always like always attached to wicked things wicked things polluted mind polluted mind he that person attached then he don't like any virtuous friends he don't he don't have any interest about dhamma that person doesn't have any interest about dhamma spirituality they can't talk about the spiritual spiritual spirituality is kind of allergy for them if someone living like like this that person also doesn't have any improvement any development about their wealth as well as their particular mental health they are lucid both because as you know in dhammapada it says manopubhanga madama the persistence are if you are doing or telling something with a wicked mind the results come in. you have to pay for it with tearful face tearful face there is a simile that buddha used in there the ox who is in on uh, pulling the cart when he stop the cart is stopping when he start to move the cart also moving it is not something to be happy for him in same way if you are doing something or telling something with wicked mind it always make trouble for you it always develop in your unhappiness no one can stop that because it is the nature of that behavior of that uh, development you already developed the buddha said the person who is in this way he is always has to face uh, these kind of difficulties he is losing his uh, wealth and health both in here particularly health mean mental health happiness if you don't have happiness it means you are not mentally healthy the being well to do not to support father and mother who are old and past their youth this is a cause of one's downfall another one you have ability and you are kind of successful person being successful person when the time come your parents are getting weak they need some kind of support from you if you are not willing to support your parents then that is also cause for your downfall your happiness is not there your uh, wealth how much wealth wealthy you are it doesn't matter you are losing you are losing why yesterday we got the chance to talk with the, that blessing discourse the importance of parents in this very life each and everything that we are experiencing coming from our parents the blood that you have in your whole your body coming from your parents skills that you have walking talking jumping all the skills that you have as a first teacher taught by our parents they help us so regarding this i would like to another story yesterday i share a story 
there is another story i would like to share with you to uh, think about the, how important our parents are the story coming from uh, i think this is story this happened in england few years ago as i remember in 2000 2000 or nearly 2000 this happened in england uh, there was a girl who was 13 years old when the police found her in their basement she was living that that girl was living 13 years in their basement purposely mother and father hide her they don't want to allow her to go out connected with uh, the society the completely they control only thing they, they they supply food for her nothing else just food just food see when they when the police found she was not able to even walk she doesn't know any language she couldn't wear any clothes she looked like very weak so after uh, taking her in custody a special group of scholars at the particularly first did the research with the doctors investigations about her through her physical situations they gave her reports there is nothing any special things regarding her body and then they gave they they assign another group psychologists to do another research and then they they also uh, uh, give a reports about her look like there is nothing any special but they did not socialize well socialize well where that she can socialize the first step she is supposed to start with her parents but parents did not support her to socialize so now she is not able to connect with the society she is not able to talk to others or communicate with any others she is not a normal uh, normal child like others completely uh, looked like uh, animals even though animals have some kind of uh, knowledge about their traditions but she doesn't have anything so that is the report given by the psychologists somehow with the help of psychologists and doctors they started to give some lessons for her she was able to learn something gradually but unfortunately she died but you can see this story but main reason that psychologists point out mother and father did not take care that baby mother and father did not start any socializations for her that's why she was she is unable to talk she is unable to move like other kids she is not a, able to wear any clothes uh, she doesn't have any idea time and space of the purpose of life nothing so now you can see if our parents not become first teachers for us we these things similarly this thing could be happen to us today i am talking i am teaching and you are listening you are also talking when the, when the time come you have uh, so many abilities all these things created by our parents that is the meaning of socialization in sociology it says socialization it has something else but they don't talk about the influence of the parent they talk very 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 small things but the buddha in many suttas explain 
there is a deep connection with your parents so if we don't have that deep connections we don't we don't able to create a healthy society healthy society so mother and father this is very important and regarding these things i would like to say another things particularly about uh, noble eight pole path the first step samaditi right views samaditi when we going into deeper level of samaditi one thing i can say if someone not have confidence about their parents they are not able to attain enlightenment see it is not easy thing if someone doesn't have confidence about they accept or oh, this is my mother this is my father if they don't have these thoughts they are not able to attain enlightenment why i saying so because samaditi there are two kind of samaditi generally i can say mundane samaditi and supra mundane samaditi in mundane samma if you don't have mundane samaditi you can't get into noble eight pole path in mundane samaditi it says you not supposed to go with michaditi michaditi means you don't believe mom you don't believe dad you don't believe karma you don't believe the buddha you don't believe the teachings of the buddha you don't think about this this life and next life you don't have any idea you don't believe anything about these things that is mithyaditi person who is in that status that person is not able to practice dhamma because he don't care law and order norms values abuse he don't care all the values is starting with this is my mother this is my father this is the main point to start all the values that we can create that, that we can develop as human beings therefore if someone doesn't have that confidence this is my father this is my mother i have responsibility to take care of them my obligation is to help them if we don't have that confidence we are not able to attain enlightenment we are not able to eliminate all the defilements so therefore that much very strong feeling is there according to noble eight pole path and you can keep in your mind if you don't have confidence about the mom and dad uh, there's no way to attain enlightenment but it's happening around the world in this world 90% not actually 99% people believe creative god they are not accepting their parents as a creative god but buddha said brahmati mata putra your creative god is not someone is your mom and dad how we get we are sometimes see all the stages you experience you are experiencing all the stages what are the stages you know boy and girls are there we experience in this society and then the, there's a girl who attained uh, girls then became a big girl now she has ability to produce children so they can they can see the the the, the circle of periods and all these things they get married and uh, having sex they ready to produce a baby continuously 9 month they go to see the doctor through the clinics they are measuring their weight they are measuring pressure diabetic cholesterol everything happening all these uh, things are there with the, with the support of doctors and nurses and following all the guidance of the doctors changing of food the style the, the the way how you eat you, you ate now you completely changing into different way healthy way and you are supported in many ways you are getting supports from others at the end labor room you you ready to deliver baby you be delivering baby with the help of doctors and nurses 
And little later, maybe two, three months later, even years or years later, you ready to put in thoughts to that baby you create by the God. You create by the God. Everything happened. You already experienced everything. What, what, you, what you did as a mother, what you did as a father, everything experienced yourself. At the end, a few years later, you, you ready to put a seed to that boy or girl's mind. You are a creation of the God. This is mitchaditi. You are experiencing everything. At the end, you are attributing to someone else. Now you can see what, what is happening to us. We are going away from the Nibbana. <laughs> we are experiencing everything. We are not able to realize this world. Then how we can realize uh, ourselves if we are not able to see, if, I mean, realize these simple things. So this is the main mistake in this world that we have. We are we ready to attribute to someone else. You never experience about the God. You, you never met the God. You didn't listen to God. If you have some kind of psychological issues, then you can hear. Otherwise, you are not hearing from the God. Only the reason you can hear from the God if you have any psychological issues. But anyway, the father-mother relationships is very important in this society to develop our morale, develop our morale. Norms, values, values are very important in this human being. If you are talking about human beings, how we can talk about human beings without values? So parents are the roots for all these values. That's why the Buddha mentioned in this Parabhava Sutta, when the time comes, they need some support from you. You established already some degrees. If you are not ready to help them, that is not something helpful for you to develop your happiness as well as your uh, uh, wealth, to grow your wealth, your losing. Because when we are, when you are not happy, then your wealth also losing because of that unhappiness. When you are living unhappily, you can't keep your wealth. It is also losing from you. It is happening. Next one. To be a rat, a drunkard, a gambler, and to squander, all one earns, this is a cause of one's downfall. I don't know to explain any of these things. You know better than me. Hmm? You know better than me all these things. But, but drinking is a habit in this human world. It is increasing each and every year. We can see the statistics reports. Each and every year it's increasing. I don't know. There's no way to stop it. Not only that, even new things are adding. New things are adding. New things adding means you, you might uh, know uh, now uh, well, marijuana is very famous around the world. Most of the states are legalized now. Marijuana you can buy as a production in various productions. More than 20 varieties are there. I'm sorry if I'm introducing to you these things, <laughs> there are more than 20 varieties. It has chocolates, cookies, uh, uh, and uh, so many ways. And uh, as soft drinks sometimes, so many, I have been noticing these things because this is related to my subject. I don't know what is happening. What is happening to this world? Marijuana is the most dangerous drugs in this world. But no one talking about that. No one ready to accept it, but it is very dangerous. I have been noticing 
people who had been using marijuana continuously five, five to 10 years, they are never come back to their normal life, even though they are recovering few years, 20 years, 25 years. No, they can't come back to their normal life again. I have been noticing through my experience, I'm telling this. But unfortunately, I don't know what is happening to this country. Day by day, states are growing, legalizing marijuana. It looked like something happening with, with the help of Mexico. It's, like, it's something, it is looked like it's kind, kind of their tricks. But I don't know exactly, but this is true. But it is cause of suffering. It is the directly reason to lose your wealth and health both. You, you can see through all the experience looking at the society, looking at your neighbors, sometimes perhaps looking at your uh, friends, you can see it. So all these are reasons to lose your wealth and your health both. What does mean so losing your health? Means your mental health, your happiness. When you don't, when you are, when you are losing, losing your happiness means you are losing your spirituality. How much happiness you increase in that much is spirituality easy to increase. I'm not uh, saying if you are just develop your happiness in the right way, you can develop your spirituality. No, I'm not saying so. But if you're on the path, doing right things, doing wholesome things, so your happiness, your spirituality is developing, which is these are similar things. But anyway, if you are not involved with any of these things, which is very supportive to increase your happiness as well as to protect your wealth, to protect your wealth. To be proud of birth, of wealth, or clan, and to despise one's own kinsman, this is a cause of one's downfall. If someone, the proud is not something good to develop, but if someone proud about their birth, oh, I am, I belong to this class, I belong to this clan, something saying so, developing proud, conceit, conceit is not kind of good thoughts that we should develop. Completely we should control proud. Sometimes this word is interesting. Sometimes we can see some people have some kind of uh, statesmen. I am proud because I am Buddhist. I am proud because I am Buddhist. Some statesmen are there in their t-shirts, their shirts. <laughs> it is un-Buddhistic. It is un We practice Buddhism not to be proud. We practice Buddhism to reduce our pride. That is the reasons to practice. But unfortunately, they have statements, uh, I am proud because I am Buddhist. It is also un-Buddhistic. Therefore, Buddhism, or uh, saying anything not about your practice, not about your education, whatever the thing saying, if you are say, I am proud about these things, it means you are increasing your unhappiness, not happiness. But you look like you are happy. And generally, I have heard thousands of times uh, new parents telling uh, uh, about their kids. They are encouraging their kids. Make me proud. Make me proud. Make me proud. According to Buddhism, it is not healthy. It is not healthy. It is completely wrong. We are not supposed to develop our pride. We have to develop humble, gentle. These are the qualities we have to develop. 
instead of developing these humble and gentle qualities, if, you are, if someone try to develop their pride, they're losing their happiness. They're losing their wealth. When they don't have happiness, it is, it is cause for their wealth, definitely. How much wealth you have if you don't have happy happiness, you can't enjoy with that event. That wealth become useless if you're not happy. So therefore, anyway, thinking about your birth, thinking about your class, thinking about your class, you're not supposed to be pride. You're not supposed to develop any unwholesome thoughts. Why? It is the way that you are losing your happiness. It is the way that you are losing your happiness without knowing. That's why Buddha said in uh, this particular sutta, uh, not to develop this kind of wicked thought. These are wicked thoughts. We are not supposed to develop any of these wicked thoughts because these are dangerous, harmful for our success, spirituality as well as our wealth. To have much wealth and ample gold and food, but to enjoy one's luxurious alone, this is cause of one's downfalls. The Buddha did not advise us to not to earn wealth. The Buddha always advised us to earn wealth. For what? We want to survive. We want to survive. There are four things that Buddha always mentioned. When the time comes, you have to have something to eat. When the time comes, there should be a place to sleep. When the time comes, there, 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 I mean, uh, as necessary, you, you're supposed to have clothes. As something necessary, you're supposed to get medicine. All these four things are the basic things that we should have. But these basic things that you can consume according to your income, according to your income. How much earn, how, how much uh, things that you can earn through your uh, jobs or whatever the things you're doing, it doesn't matter. According to that level, you have to consume all these things for requisites. It means someone can survive with five dollars. The person who has more income, that person not supposed to stay with that five dollars. That person, that that person can uh, spend according to his income, maybe a hundred dollars. Buddha says so. That's why it is mentioned in here. You always live according to your wealth, uh, income. You always have to manage your life according to income. If you don't have much, then you have to reduce the expenses. Expenses means not for unnecessary things, necessary things. Person who has income like a, a, look like 5,000 per month. That person not supposed to spend 6,000 per month. That person supposed to spend divided into four groups. 5,000, that person supposed to divide into four groups. Uh, two portions that, was, that person can use for these basic things. These basic things means food, lodging. Food and lodging, two persons. Another person, we have to keep. For what? To use in emergency. Perhaps uh, you might lose in your jobs or something happening like uh, last last few years, few years ago, happened COVID situation, something like that. Investment. One part, you have to invest. Invest. So 
banking and investment. So then the Buddha is the person who, who was talking about the banking system, investment. The Buddha advice. So now you can see divided into four, four groups. Ekena bhoge bunjaya. One part you can use for your eating. Dvihi kammam payoje. Two parts you have to invest. Chatutanchani, that the fourth one you have to invest, you have to bank, you have to keep some man, protect some man. Chatutanchani dapeya. Because you don't know when, how some unnecessary things come to you. We have to prepare for that. So, spending money like this, if someone not using according to their income, they are, I mean, eating and all these basic requisites, not fulfilling according to their income, that person going to lose his wealth as well as his happiness. Normally, particularly in Western world, people believe the Buddha did not talk about anything about the income, the earned money. Buddha did not uh, talk about uh, this, this kind of uh, mundane happiness. They think always Buddha talk about suffering, 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 suffering. No. This particular sutta, it's explained. The way how we can enjoy this life. They, uh, Buddha explained the way, the things that we have to do to develop our happiness, to increase our happiness. So these are one of, these, these are uh, things that we can apply our day-to-day -day life to increase our happiness as well as our health, mental health particularly. Why do they say so? You have to live according to your balancing your income. Why do they say so? Buddha used in Pattakamma Sutta. In Pattakamma Sutta, there are beautiful similes that Buddha used. Two similes are there. Ajaddu marana. Ajaddu marana. It means person like collecting and collecting, 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 collecting. In his whole life, what he done? Collected. Can that person take all this money with his death? No. Collected, collected, collected and keep all the money under the bed or in the bank. <laughs> I don't know where they can keep, but anywhere, and that person ready to go. Then who can, who is going to enjoy with this well? Who is going to enjoy? Perhaps uh, the government. <laughs> Perhaps the government would be enjoy very much. It's happening. Then what is the purpose of your life? You spend time, your energy to earn money, and keeping all this money, you are you you ready to go. You ready to go away. You want to spend your time, energy to give someone this money? No. Therefore, you have to enjoy with that money. You have to develop your spirituality using that money. You have to develop your experience using that money. That is the Buddha's advice. The other one is Udumbara Kadika. Udumbara Kadika means person who climbed the tree to get some, pick up some fruits. Instead of picking up the fruits, that person ready to pick a branch of the tree. When you take branch, branch of the tree, all the fruits are there. Flowers also there. You can only eat only ripe one. Others, you're ready to throw it away. Some people are like this. They spend money like this without thinking what is necessary, what is unnecessary. They just spend money. That is also not good. Buddha did not advise to do that so. So always you have to use your money, benefits for yourself and others. Benefits for yourself and others. Others means 
there are instructions for that. First, think about your own family. Buddha had mentioned in Patakama Sutta, think about your children. If your parents are there, think about your parents, your brothers and sisters, your relatives, your friends, your neighbors. This is the way how you can spend money benefits for others. This is the way how you can spend money benefits for others. It is easy to give money for your family. It is not uh, difficult. It is easy things. So then easy way we can we can do difficult things. At the end we can do the we can do uh, 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 we can donate or we can give money to a stranger too because we are losing that uh, stress. Giving is a stressful thing, but when we are able to reduce that stress, then easily we can practice it. But if you have more money, you have to do social works. Social works means uh, helping others. And one time you have to uh, pay taxes. Uh, all these are the requirements that the Buddha mentioned in the Sutta. Pay taxes, it's mentioned in, 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 in the Sutta. These are no, not new things. Don't worry about political leaders. They are increasing taxes all the time and they are taking our money through the taxes. No, taxes, the Buddha also talk about taxes. It is something happened beginning of this society. <laughs> it is not new to this society. So this is the way how we should manage our wealth. This is the way how we should manage. If someone manage in their wealth in this manner, they can take care of their happiness. They can increase their happiness. Sometimes you might think I am a government agent <laughs> giving some explanations to give a good picture of your income and things. No, no, no. That is not this. This is the way how Buddha explained in the suttas, the way how we should take care ourselves to increase our happiness, increase, uh, protect our wealth. This is the way how we can be a success, successful person. Success means not just thinking wealth, it is very important about the health. So if someone not using money, even though that person has a lot of incomes, but according to that income he is not living, it is also cause for losing his, particularly losing his happiness, his health. There was a story during the Buddha's time, I would like to share with you that one also, uh, Matta Kundali, the story of Matta Kundali. Uh, there was a person during the Buddha's time next to the, actually very close to the temple where Buddha was dwelling. That person is one of the wealthiest person in that village, but he's a stingy. He's, he, he don't like to give anything for anyone. So he had a baby, uh, he had a baby. When, he, when the baby is growing, doesn't have enough nutrition for that baby. So uh, he got the sickness kind of sicknesses, weakening vitamins and things for his growing. Now he is getting weaker and weaker. So definitely he needs some kind of treatment. But the father is worried about his wealth. He's the richest, one of the richest person in that area, but he's worried about losing his wealth. He was thinking always, my father collected all these things and then he advised me to collect more. I don't want to lose anything because of my son. He was thinking thus, but he, he can't look at his son now. He's getting weak and weak every day. Somehow he wanted to do something. Therefore, what he did, he went to see the places where the doctors are hang out and going to them, he had been talking to them, by the way, how are you today? And then uh, 
talking about all these nonsense. At the end, he ready to raise the question, this kind of sicknesses, what you are doing normally? And then they, they knew this person has kind of uh, uh, indirect uh, things. That's why he wanted to know from us. So let's see what we can do. And they gave wrong instructions to treat that kind of sicknesses. Then this person came to house with the help of his wife. He started to do treatment using that information that he gathered hanging around with doctors. So then that sicknesses get more and more weak. Now he's very, he's, he's in very dangerous situation. Now he's uh, on his dying bed. Somehow the Buddha knew he's going to die soon. Before die, he's an innocent young person who born to this world, unfortunately, because of bad behavior and foolishness of their parents, he, he, he has to pay for this one because there are so many treatment for that kind of sicknesses. But unfortunately, their parents are not, his parents are not ready to do any treatment for that innocent guy. Having that uh, thoughts, metta thoughts, the Buddha went to see him, appearing in front of him, he was very happy. Then he died with that happy thoughts. As a result of that uh, happy thoughts, he was able to uh, uh, born in another good place. That is something else. But if someone can do some kind of uh, treatment for their sicknesses, so we have to spend for that. We don't want to keep our money without taking treatment for suitable treatment for our sicknesses because we earn money for what? To get support, to have comfortable life. So therefore, if someone uh, have more money, they can do the treatments in five star, seven star level. That is suitable. The, that is not against the teachings of the Buddha. It is according to the teachings of the Buddha. To deceive by fast food, uh, uh, Brahman or ascetic or any other mendicant, this is a cause of one's downfall. This is also very, I mean, uh, simple things and understand things, very easy to recognize it. Uh, anyone, try to hide something and pretend something else, they don't have their happiness. They are not uh, genuine, they are not, uh, uh, honest, when we are losing these qualities from us, honesty and uh, humbleness, all these are very good qualities when we are talking about the human beings. So when we lose these qualities, then there is no way to be happy. Losing mental quality, if we are trying to show something else, Oh, no, I have this quality. I am such a person like this. I am a greater than you. I am a greater than such a such a uh, famous one. Something like in, uh, in fake, if you are trying to stay with that fake, then definitely you are not uh, healthy because uh, you can't be happy. You're always going down with your happiness. You are losing your concentration. You are losing your mindfulness. Losing mindfulness and concentration, there is no way to develop any kind of spiritual, spiritual development. There is no way to develop any kind of spiritual development. Therefore, we have to be honest. We have to develop our uh, humble, humble thoughts, humble behavior, we have to live person as a humble person, 
in the society and uh, whether you are uh, who, whoever status that you are maintaining it doesn't matter you can be a humble person in 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 the highest levels to lowest level that humbleness and all the qualities are very important for us these things i don't want to discuss more these are very simple and very famous we can see around the world and we can see the results and dangers everything through all these facts these are not uh, normal things these are very real social issues that we can see in the model modern situations model uh, society because this society kind of uh, um, society that they always thinking about uh, uh, sexual satisfactions that much we weak for example if you want to sell something just think about you have some kind of productions you want to sell to sell you ready to follow the procedure then you ready to start with the kind of advertisements and things. So then what kind of advertisement you ready to take? Just think about uh, you, uh, you produce a toothbrush. Toothbrush. Then the way how you going to create your advertisement to introduce your toothbrush. You ready to hire a beautiful lady. Don't you? You ready to hire a beautiful lady. And then giving that productions to on her, keeping on her hand, and we are asking to, yes, you can uh, you can pretend you are using this brush, toothbrush. And then asking to others, okay, I'm using, you also can use it. I'm 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 beautiful. My beauty, the secret is my beauty because I'm using this. What is this? Is this real? Is this truth? It's not truth. It's completely sex-oriented things. They increase in our sexual desire and using that weaknesses, they're ready to sell things for us. It's happening around the world because of, that's why we, 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 this happened to us in this world. The satisfaction is not there with, uh, I mean, as family, there are so many uh, incidents, so many stories uh, spreading around the world because it is kind of weakness of us. So it is very dangerous. You don't know how much money you spend. You don't know how much things you are losing. I have recent experience in regarding these kind of things. Uh, recently, one of guy who worked hard to earn money, he had a girl, girlfriend, but later on, he found another girl who is beautiful than his girlfriend. So then now he wanted to switch the girlfriend. Then he switched. He decided to marry that new beautiful girl. So he married within in two weeks he found that beautiful girl addicted to drugs. Then he wanted to turn back. At that moment, he had to spend all his wealth for her, uh, his house on her name, his car on, on her name, all the bank account connected with her. Finally, 
he lost everything within in few month within in few, few month this is recent story that i found that i met someone with the counseling but this is the true is happening the buddha said it in this parabhava sutta down for sutta you are losing your everything these are living example for that this is also related to that same things in different ways been passed once you to you take a young wife and to be unable to sleep or jealous of her this is a cause of one's downfall so your partner should be balanced with you age and uh, your status and everything should be balanced in the buddha was talking about there are four things you should think about samasraddha you have to think about the thoughts uh, when we ready to find a partner samasraddha means uh, faith there 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 should be similarity with the faith faith means uh, the which is related to the culture your culture there are so many norms values taboos so you both have to have similarity ideas about the these cultures norms values taboos and things samasaddha samasila you should have similar moral similar spiritual development you should have samasila samachaga there should be similarity with uh, practicing generosity practicing generosity practicing generosity means not just giving money to others uh, helping people who are coming to your place there should be similarity with the uh, generousness samasaddha sama sila samasaga the last one is important one samapanya wisdom similarity panya thinking ability so if someone have these four qualities so this couple would be the best couple best couple they can live happily most of the time not all the time there might be some kind of difficulties but most of the time they can be happy these these are the four things that buddha advised but anyway the buddha did not appreciate this kind of uh, marriage if someone do so they are in trouble they are in trouble means they are worried all the time they are always have unhappy things so sometimes unnecessary things there so that is not something uh, advised by the buddha this is also very similar things these all are uh, going downfall there is no doubt about any of these things i don't know to get much time to discuss these things because uh, anyone can experience uh this is very important things this is a important things means i mean uh, if someone living in uh, one situations thinking about the another step particularly uh thinking about uh, uh, ambitions in here very important thing is ambitions your ambitions are very huge the these ambitions are not suitable with your platform your platform energy is different than the your ambitions you always thinking like as a person who is here in a very normal nothing to do but he wanted to become a prime minister president of the country there is no way 
there should be ability there should be kind of skills there should be knowledge without any of these things if someone thinking having making that ambitions and uh, keeping that ambitions uh, thoroughly in their mind they are not able to do anything because their wishes are very big but abilities are very small very limited we are not supposed to be that kind of persons if we if if we have that kind of thoughts then we are not able to focus anything even this moment so therefore we have to understand who i am what i am doing who i am what i am doing then i know my abilities i know my ambitions the way how we can accomplish all the ambitions i know that because very it is very clear very uh, clean path is there therefore we have if you have that kind of thoughts uh, platform is different than your ambitions is not matching knowing well the cause of down in the world the noble sage endured with insight uh, shares a happy realms so seen understanding these downfall reasons we have to develop our energy to protect ourselves developing our energy protecting ourselves we can practice we can live according to the natural law respect in natural law then we can increase our happiness because we can increase our health as well as our wealth protecting ourselves driving into right directions not in wrong directions so that person can be happy in this very life and the next life that person he is on the path of liberation it is on it is kind of developments on his path that he can achieve so therefore better to keep in our mind about our goal why we practice dhamma what is the main goal of to achieve so having that goal we can fulfill all these things step by steps so the sutta that we discussed yesterday as mangala sutta and the sutta named parabhava sutta downfall sutta both are very important to live in this society happily peacefully and maintaining our main goal these are very helpful therefore this is the way how we can apply noble eight pole path for our day to day life noble eight pole path is the path that we can apply for our supra mundane goal supra mundane goal to attain enlightenment or establish our happiness so having these thoughts in our mind let us develop our energy to practice dhamma so that would be enough for today thank you very much and take a few minutes break and